Hello everyone and welcome back to Suburban Tools Q&A with Don Bailey. We're waiting for Don to come here. Oh, here he comes right now. Hey Glenn. Hey Don, how you doing? Good buddy, good to see well, you. Well, you got a lot of fans. We got a lot of questions and a lot of uh, Q&As go through here, so got, let's... We got any stumpers in there? Some of them, yep. All right, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I like your shirt, dude. Thanks. It's like a bunch of eyeballs. I'm getting a little dizzy just looking at it. Oh, it's fun. I like them. What's yeah. with this thing being open like that? The Hawaii Five O or uh, where'd you kind come of from? shirts choke me. <laughs> Where am I dating myself with Hawaii Five O? I'll tell you. <laughs> that was back in uh, I don't even want to think about it. Seventies. There's a new Hawaii Five O, isn't there? I don't know. I think there's a new one. Yeah, no, I've anyway, seen that one. Just Miami Vice. Oh, maybe Miami Vice. Yeah, that could be. There you go. So uh, I don't have a lot of time, man. I'm going to the, oh, auto, okay. I'm going okay. to the auto show. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yep, I am, so I want to get out of here and uh, pretty soon, so let's awesome. have at it and see if we can't answer some of these questions. Okay, cool. So this is about rebuilding the OD grinder. This is from Gus Mix 22 Don, with, your price, with the price of your outstanding tools, and yes, I have, please no bitching that you do not have proper tooling on your lathe. Really, I mean, really, come on, you know? Well, Let's talk about that. Yeah, there was one tool we didn't have, but more importantly, the, they, they weren't where they were supposed to be. Uh -huh. So I had to run around the shop. That causes a lot of frustration. I'm, you know, I'm the kind of guy that I like everything to be organized. I like it to be in front of me. It makes life simple, and it makes it more fun. I get frustrated when I have to run around and try to find stuff. So it wasn't so much that we didn't have the tooling as much as it is I couldn't find it. It's that not where problem. you want it to be. Right. Not, well, where, not where it should have been, but it's a good question. Thank you. Sure. Ellie Price, she backs that one up with Don. I can identify with your frustration. I've worked for 20 years besides a tool maker whose bench was so unorganized he sometimes asked to borrow my tools when he couldn't find his. Now this man was a mechanical genius who could invent and repair any tool with no clue what was in his drawer. Which mics were in? By the way, Speaking of mics, why are micrometers or micrometers? Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> micrometer. <laughs> well, oh. I read it, I micrometers. Okay. Remember why do they call a pair of mics? Well, you know, I never, it was like shoes, they call them a pair of shoes, but you have two. Gloves, they call them a pair, you have two. True. Pants, they call them a pair of pants, but you have two. Maybe yeah. it's because you got a top and bottom anvil, and that's why they call them a pair. I don't know. Good question. No clue. That's okay. the best I can come up with. Yeah. That's a stumper. That's yeah, a stumper, yeah. a stumper. Anybody got any ideas out there, tell us about it. This is also on rebuilding the OD grinder from Carver3419. How will you hold the carbide tips? Well, we pressed them in. I assume they're talking about the carbide tips that went in the end of that outdoors, that outside sleeve right. and in the main shaft. Yeah, we just, we drilled and reamed them before heat treat, and then we pressed them in when, uh, when they came back. Okay. This is from Matt Cross. Nicely done. I completely understand the frustration of having to fix or replace tooling before you complete work on a project. I run into that a lot as a result of working on multi-shift shared mechanical environment. You can eliminate ignorance, but there's no treatment for apathy. Well, that's a great comment. I love that one. No yeah. treatment for apathy. Mm. You know, Second shifts are always a problem because you leave your machine a certain way and if you're really organized and the guy comes in behind you and, and he's sloppy uh. and he makes a mess over there, then you come in the next day, you're all frustrated, you got to clean it up again. That's one of the disadvantages of second shifts. It's a real problem. We don't have a second shift here. We, we did it many years ago. We had a similar situation. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult for us to make it work. So we've decided yeah, I not to imagine a second that, shift. Yeah, yeah not, not a good thing, but good comment. This is on uh, rebuilding an OD grinder from Egg Sir to be crushed. Wow, that's weird. What's that again? It's E G G S R to be crushed. Okay. Eggs to be crushed. I don't eggs know. to be crushed. That's kind of cute. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> Tick Don not only looks exactly like my grandfather, <laughs> but he he also acts like the same sense of humor that he had. Always a throwback in every episode. Yeah. Breaks over. Breaks over. Breaks over. <laughs> Man, I don't know what to say about that. I think that I, I take that as a compliment, so thank you for that. Your grandfather must have been a great guy. Yeah, old school, you know? Yeah, I, I got like that. I, I'm middle school. Yeah. You didn't go to any school, did you? I didn't go I, to school. I went to school, yeah, I went to school. Music school. Yeah, I want you to know, I skipped four grades. Did you really? Yeah, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Oh, you just never went back? No, I never went back. Didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> See, you thought I skipped him because I was smart. Yeah. That's not why I skipped him. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> that could be too. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Okay, Rick Brandt says, can't you think, can't thank you enough for these vids and your enthusiasm. He likes watching these. Oh, great. Thank you so much. You know, I, I want to comment on that for just a moment. 
the whole idea of education, in, in my view, is to make it fun. And uh, it, it, it can be boring, but it doesn't have to be. So some of you out there are probably not going to like it because we're making fun out of it and we're enjoying it, trying to have a good time with it. So I try not to be too serious. Uh, and I think in education, if it's fun, it's easier to retain it versus if I'm monologue and I just say, well, I'm going to drill this hole. Here, I, I just drilled it. Uh, now, see, here I drilled it. Right. So that, I don't think the retention is as great as it is if you, you make it You have to have fun. an entertainment value right, on it. Right. Yeah. So, so that's the whole idea of, of our website or of our YouTube channel, rather, is to make it fun. And that's what we, we intend to keep doing that. So if you have any comments on that, love to hear them. Well, it's, it's for someone like me, too. When I'm watching it, I actually enjoy them because I like the humor that's involved. Why would half you, the time, why, I'm in the dust on what you're talking why about. Why would you watch them? I watch them well, because I like what well, I want to learn. Oh, are you learning? Yes, I'm learning. Well, that's a good I'm thing. I'm learning what a micrometer is. Micrometer. <laughs> if I read it, I say <laughs> micrometer. <laughs> All right. This is another comment from Ralph Rotten. It says, good stuff. Enjoy your narration, Don. Oh, thanks. Appreciate the comment. Now, this one, priesthood agitator. He says he wants to come over and put in an application for the job. Oh, man, come on over. I don't know where you live, but I uh, hope it's not too far. I'd love to see you. Uh, Pancho Villa says, amazing. Thank you for the videos. Pancho Villa, he's, uh, he's made a number of comments. Pancho, thank you again. And this is about the micrometer history and proper use by you. Micrometer. Micrometer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get you saying it wrong. It's from Eddie Kowecki. I believe that's how he say it. Right. If I'm wrong, correct me. Sounds good. Very informative. I enjoy all your videos. I would like to add how important it is not to store your one-inch mics and any calibers in a fully closed position and leave an air gap to prevent corrosion. Hard to tell, but at 14 minutes, 40 seconds in your video, I believe you did back it off, or maybe not. But that is what it made me think of it. To make this comment. Yeah, no, I did back it off, and, and you're absolutely right. You should never store them in a closed position. However, in the case of the mics that I was using, those had carbide tips, they can't rust anyway, but it's never a good idea to store it that way, so good yeah. comment. Yeah, it's like parallels when they get stuck together, you know? Yep. Yep. Um, this one wants a tour of the shop, us to give a tour of the shop. Well, we're going to work on that. I, hopefully, okay. we're going to be able to do that coming up soon. We are. We have some other videos we're, we're working on, as I mentioned. We're going to do one on the jig grinder. We're yep. bringing one back into service. It's been out for a long time. And we're reworking it, trying to get it functioning again, which has been kind of a challenge. But we're going to show a video of that. And then we're going to show a video on jig grinding. That you know, for me, cool. watching the videos, I'm actually able to talk shop to the guys when I walk up to him not just look like some dude walking up and going duh. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Ricardo Fon Fonseca. Is has so much fun watching this. Great video. That was when rebuilding the OD grinder. Thanks. Appreciate the comment again. And Michael Thompson says, good video. That re that really makes sense. I really never thought about it, but it really is good to know. He's much talking about out of round. Oh yeah, there's so round. many so many comments on out around and so many different techniques for doing it but you know uh, I think you have to go with what you believe in and what makes common sense and that's and that's kind of what we did so appreciate your comment Fruity Rung says that lapping is better with petroleum as oil well that's true that's true you know if the lapping compound has a bit of oil in it already so if you need additional oil, that's that's you're absolutely right. It should be wet when you're uh, uh, when you're lapping. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't cut as freely as it does if you don't. So yeah, that's that's good comment. Sure, Thank we you. got someone teasing you about some political correct stuff here. It says, I think Don's next trip should be to a sexual harassment seminar. It's not gonna do any good. I was there twice. <laughs> they, they sent me away. They sent me away and said, don't come back. You're hopeless. Oh, yeah. I he hug, no he hug, baby. I'm like, <laughs> he's hopeless. Get him out of here. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Well, listen. If I have to, if I have to give up hugs for sexual harassment, that ain't gonna happen, man. I, I like hugs. I'm gonna take as long all as the hug on. doesn't result in a pat on the butt. I don't even mind a hug from you. <laughs> but you can't wear that shirt when you give me a hug. Oh come on! <laughs> no, yeah. I toned it down. You should have seen the shirts. I had to go through almost every shirt to tone it. This is my least toned. That thing's got eyes. It looks like it's <laughs> looking at you. Well, it's changed. Except the feather ball. <laughs> That's next. All right, uh, this is BC Block 02. What happened to the heat treat? 
treating. I assume it was done before the finished grind. This is about rebuilding no degrinder. Was the BNS bore reamed again after heat treat in case there was any bore distortion? Okay, a couple of good questions here. The first one is yes, it was heat treated first and we ground it afterwards, obviously. Yeah. Uh, with respect to the taper, no, you can't ream it once it's hardened, but what we did do was we took a, a, a taper that matched a male taper, we put lapping comp on it, we went inside and we lapped it out a little bit before we decided to grind it. Then we put our good taper in there, okay. and we had to use it uh, so we could connect our dog for grinding. So, yeah, we did take care of all of that. We did lap it or finish it up after it came back from the heat treat. Okay, this, question is, again. this is on rebuilding an OD grinder from uh, Edward David. Hey Don, you really have made some interesting videos. I love your channel, especially the field trips. I was wondering if the part was heat treated before you did finally grind, whoops, before you did finally grind to get the tapers concentric to the OD. Or is it being heat treated between the second and third video in this series um, to have the final grind yet to come? This so far is a great series, but it went a little fast and some steps seem to be left out. I'm sure you'll be, fill us in though. Thank you, Don, for all the wonderful videos and a great job. Well, great. You know, we're, we're and, it's, and it's, a, it's a worthwhile comment, but you know, we, we try not to make the videos too long. We try not to leave out the important steps, but maybe we did in that case a little bit. So we'll try to do a little better on the next video. But it was already heat treated before we ground it, obviously. That's, that's the way it is. Once it's hardened, then, then the only choice is to grind it. I mean, you can technically turn it uh, with certain equipment using bores on, but that's not what we do here. We, we actually go in and grind it to get a nice slip fit. Yeah, that's a good question. It's like when people ask me, was your guitar tuned before you started playing? You know? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it better be. This was from Off Guy. It's about rebuilding OD grinder again. Nice video. Nice work, Don. Are you using a diamond wheel on the surface grinder to cut the carbide slugs off? Next time you're cutting the threads, try swinging the compound slide over to 29, 29 point and a half degrees of off perpendicular. It may be marked as 60 and a half, 61 degrees on some lays. And using the compound to advance the cutting tool between cuts. This way, it only cut one side of the V. It lowers the pressure of the tool less likely to snap off and helps make the chips curl up nicely instead of making bird's nest. Look forward to part three. What's this dude's name again? Off guy. Off guy. Hey, good eye, man. You're absolutely right. Keep in mind, I haven't been in the shop in a lot of years, and you're absolutely right. That's the right way to chase a thread, and I didn't do it right. So These guys catch you on. They're good. Yeah, yeah, you got a good eye, man. You caught me on it, but you know, he called me on it. That's okay, but I forgot about that. You're abs technically, you're absolutely correct. You should be cutting on one side. You set it at 63 degrees instead of 60, and that cleans up one side of the thread every time you feed in. The other advantage of that is when you're feeding in on a cross slide, uh, if you're going to take off, I don't remember the correct ratio now, but it's a sign of the angle. You feed in a thousandths, you're really only taking off about seven or eight tenths. You're not taking off a thousandths. So okay. if you want to hold the thread a little closer uh, to size, that's a great way to do it. But that's the proper way to cut. The guy's absolutely correct. Cool. This is uh, again on rebuilding OD grinder from Gary Smith. When you were cutting those threads, uh, your compound was at 90 degrees to the work, and it looked like you were feeding the cross slide inward for each cut. Don't you have a set of your compound slide to 33 and feed 33 degrees and feed your thread cuts from the compound and only cut from one side of the thread? The question has been asked and answered prior to that. <laughs> and I, and I <laughs> rest my case. I take the fifth on that one, man. That's it. No, you're absolutely right again. That's two of you guys caught that. So good eye. This one's this one's pretty funny. Michael Marks, enjoy your YouTube clips. Glenn's a great addition. Thank you. <laughs> Glenn, I can pronounce micrometer. Uh, I mean, micrometer. <laughs> Thanks for the informative site. I <laughs> oh, love it. Glenn, we love your enthusiasm, man. Um, Jabramo. What if we should call him micrometer, Glenn? Micrometer, Glenn. <laughs> they're, they're, be a good name for the MMG, band. MMG, micrometer, Glenn. The micrometers. <laughs> this is from Jabramo. 340. Nice work. I love to learn more about honing process machine you use. Was a special type of tool needed in the honing machine to produce a parallel bore? No, it was a standard hone, um, which is what we use for a lot of our products. We do a lot of honing. We do some jig grinding as well, but we do honing. So, yeah, it's a standard sun and hone with a standard uh, uh, hone adapter and the, and the stones. You know, you can buy rough stones uh, 
finished cut stone. I even got to try. Yeah, honing. and you did the honing on it. Yeah, so. except for I was wasn't worried about the the the. Oil was going to squirt all over my shirt. I stunk the whole day, well, man. Well, if it, it got an extra, you wouldn't even notice no, it. No, no, no. This shirt wouldn't even go near the shop. Are you kidding? <laughs> this is my out in town oh, shirt. All right. Okay, this is Sadiq Ali. Thanks for sharing. I think it was great. Grinding the hole at one time. Thumbs up for clamping tip. Oh, it was good. about rebuilding the OD grinder. Yeah, okay. Thank you for the comment. Appreciate it. And JKD Wayne. Hilarious. Who needs a CNC when you have a Don? I wish you had a craftsman like Don. Oh, well, yeah. He's real good, huh? Running the country. He wants you to run the country. Well, you're right. <laughs> Listen, with that political mess, you know, we're in the middle of this thing right now. You know, the caucus is coming up. and Oh, yeah. I mean, I, this, I, I don't even want to comment on the political stuff here, but we got a real issue in this country with mm -hmm. Hillary and, and, uh, and Crazy Bernie and uh, Trump and Cruz and... That whole group, man, it's going to be wild to see how this thing turns out. I've never seen anything like it in my I don't think anybody has seen anything like no, it. No, you know, ever, I, ever. I myself personally don't get offended by Trump uh, because I like brash people who like to win. You know? <laughs> Let's move on, man. We're getting in dangerous territory. Yeah, we are. <laughs> this is from Chronic. Very nice. I definitely was asking myself what trick you have used to get the required concentricity. Since the holes in the shaft were done by drilling driving a drill and reamer with tailstock, which is every, everybody knows is not a precise operation. Well, drilling that through hole is exactly that. That's just a through hole. That thing doesn't make any difference. We did come in there with the reamer, but it will make it concentric with the chuck. Okay. Concentric enough for us. And it doesn't, even if it's not concentric, it doesn't matter that much because when we grind it, it will be concentric because we're gonna locate off that tapered hole and that's and when we grind it locating off the taper hole that's when we make it concentric and right. in addition to that in the case of this uh, the, the, the functionality of the tailstock and its purpose is really to hold the part concentricity is not so much of an issue there at all uh, okay. it doesn't matter that much because remember it once it come once you pull the tailstock handle out and you put your part in and you close it it's done doing its job so concentricity is not that big of a deal. Uh, it could be off a lot and it wouldn't matter, but I'm comfortable that it's probably within less than a thousand. So it's plenty concentric for its function. All right, so that's, that's, that's all the questions we have for today. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more. You know, you get, you get like 2,000, 3,000 hits within a day. I think that's awesome. Yeah, we're really pleased with it. And, and again, the whole yeah. idea is to make it light and airy, to educate, have fun. And we think that the Q&A sessions are, are going to be a lot of fun for us and for those of you out there that make the comments. We thank you for them and uh, keep them coming. And we're going to try to respond to every one of them. We can't respond to all of them, but we're going to try and uh, with the good and the bad. So, you, you know, know, do you see what's coming down the pipeline? I, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I mean, look, at I responded to sexual harassment. <laughs> I responded to somebody's grandfather, you know, so I, I'm not afraid of the question. <laughs> Ask the question, we'll answer it, okay? <laughs> and, and by the way, uh, we're getting... 4,000 hits a day. 4,000 hits a day. Oh, by the way, this is a natural blonde. <laughs> is that why they call you Blondie in the yeah. shop now? Yeah. Goldilocks. <laughs> Goldilocks. What do they call me? Baldilocks. <laughs> Baldilocks. <laughs> That's what it's, I was like this when I was probably 22 years old. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Did you wear a lot of ball caps? I did. Yeah? I did, yeah. But, you know, God put hair on the ugly heads. Oh. So the good looking heads, he made bald. Okay. Well, so you're kind of in between. I'm not I'm so sure between, if your head's yeah. ugly or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thanks for watching, folks. And uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, keep your comments coming. And keep a lookout for our next videos, which will be coming up shortly. Again, we're going to try to release one video every week. I think we did not do that over the Christmas uh, well, yeah, over Christmas the holiday season. Busy, but, yeah. uh, but we're going to keep doing it. So, again, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time around.